And that was Big Fat Bankers by Carlos Stein, who we've got here in the studio. Welcome, Carlos. Hello, Kevin. Hello there. Now I say that's a very interesting song. Big Fat Bankers, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I've, I've, uh, I, I penned that one from personal experience as I sat in the courtroom of um, Her Majesty's Crown Court in Leicester um, with the RBS Bank trying to repossess my house. Crikey. And um, it turns out they made a big mistake, and um, the and the barrister for RBS uh, got a real telling off from the judge. All oh, right. And um, but I was sitting, as I was sitting in the waiting room, I, I I wrote all the lyrics to this song and thought I'm going to do these. Right. So this all came from that one that one experience. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a brilliant song. So yeah. So what sort of genre would you say that is then, Carlos? Or or, or is it a genre indeed? I don't really like to to specify genres because that starts to classify you in with different types of music yeah pigeonholes here yeah um i'd say indie normally works <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt yes use the all-encompassing indie um but it is well I, I always use the term alternative but this is truly alternative though isn't it oh haven't you heard the new alternative is called quirky oh right yeah oh right so this is quirky yeah well as a as a music genre or just it's no, something, something that's just made not up. Main, it's something that's not mainstream. It's oh, official. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Quirky is the new alternative. Yes, yeah, so I think that that sums you sums you down to a T. So, where where did uh, the idea for all this come about in this particular all type what? of music? Oh, the uh, the actual looping of music. Well, well we'll get onto the mu- mu- looping a bit later. But what about this? You know, your um, individual style of music and alternate and quirky lyrics well i've always been influenced by people like um ian jury um the the if you remember those oh yeah i remember those um and a lot of the the 80s people um and i i felt that i wanted to to say something um and i was a little bit creative as well and i thought why waste it 
um, I've got to do something with all this creativity and uh, get it out to people. If they don't like it, then uh, it's their fault. Mm. And you're quite a humorous chap as well, aren't you? I like to add a little bit of humour into it as well. That's it. That comes across. That's what I love about seeing you live, actually. I remember seeing you, I think first it was at OBS a few years ago, and it did make me laugh, actually, especially Big Fat Bankers. Um, so it was very funny. Um, so what sort of venues do you normally play this sort of music? Um, all sorts. Um, obviously not your um, average town pub full of lager louts. Um, with the football on the screen right. I don't think they take to it no so I prefer their oasis or something it has to be um, people who are going out looking for something um, different or quirky <laughs> <laughs> um, so the normal places in Leicester the Shed musician um, I actually played at the Curve once oh um, really I suppose what you need is, a, is like a quirky kind of venue isn't it one that sort of specialises in this type of music. Well, you used to have one, the magazine. You could oh. go in there, you know, seven quid, you can see um, about ten bands that are just totally weird. Mm. And if you wanted to see something really different, you'd pile into there. And the place was rammed as well. Oh, well, that sounds good. I've never been there, I must admit. It doesn't exist anymore, does it? No, it's um, Tesco now, I think. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Not quite the same effect. Oh, OK. So why don't we play another one of your songs now, On a Wing and a Prayer. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that one? Um, that one came about um, because I, my full-time job, um, I work at the university and I get to meet some researchers from all sorts of different areas. And I got talking to this uh, guy who'd worked um, for um, the ISS International Space Station and he was researching ailments that you get on uh, in space, specifically in space. And um, there was loads of really strange stuff, obviously. But the weirdest one I found was um, applies to when the um, astronauts are one's chosen to do a repair outside, while the other two, the other people stay in the vessel. Um, mm. And that their advice is don't look at the Earth right? because they always have to go out at a certain time of night. Um, it's either too hot or too cold, so the Earth is always down. Um, don't look at the Earth because if you do you just lose all, all, all your perception of dimension and they go into like a 3D trip oh. and they go really paranoid and um, they start thinking that everything's going to fail they're all isolated in space and uh, they literally have to be pulled off the rails by another two astronauts and you can imagine they don't like right. going out and putting the space suits on just because someone's imagine. freaked out yeah. um, so I thought that whole experience that would be good to put into a song as if uh, in the mind of the guy who thinks that everything's going to fail and that, you know, his visor's cracked and right. the ship's going to fail. Okay, yeah. Oh, OK, that's brilliant. So here is On a Wing and a Prayer. We're headed for annihilation I on the wing of a prayer All of you would better beware You'd better beware Four computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. Ten years of the simulation I got it drilled into my head We gotta deal with the situation Critical code red The oxygen generator Is running out of air the solar accumulator's gonna need a repair We're headed for annihilation I'm on the wing of a prayer All of you had better beware You better beware We're headed for annihilation I'm on the wing of a prayer All of you had better beware You better beware the robotic manipulator spinning out of control There's no communication from the orbital console Computers have lost the data Another circuit's have flown No one here's gonna save ya Hundreds of miles from home We're headed for annihilation all of you had better beware, you better beware We're headed for annihilation I am the wing of a prayer All of you had better 
That was On a Wing and a Prayer by Carlos Stein. Um, and that was on one of your, that was on your latest EP, was it not? Yes. Um, <coughs> it's more of an album, isn't it? How many songs are on there? Um, six. I think six classes as a s- small album. Or I think so. I'd, I'd normally put it at seven, but yeah, I'm sure we could stretch, say six. It's just the last one had eight on it, and that was a CD. All oh, right. <laughs> oh, was it? So it's a mini album. Yeah, this is a, an intermediate um, album to promote two of the songs. Um, an intermediate album? Well, um, it's a way to promote two songs without recording um, six more songs. <laughs> All right. So I've put some of the old favourites on here, what I, um, the audiences have told me their favourite songs are. Um, so it's got two new songs and a couple of old classics. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that's aimed at people who haven't really seen the act before. Right. Um, so we've got um, Corporate Greed, which is about um, the utility companies and the fact that they can actually, if they wanted to, if it wasn't for um, the, the government uh, watchdogs, they would be charging what they want mm-hmm. and um, it would exceed the price of the food and the mortgage. And right. They can cut you off if they want. Um, so that's some of the lyric. Um, they've got the they've got the power um, all good jeery positive stuff the there Carlos <coughs> well, it's quite, <laughs> quite negative yeah. Uh, and then the people in the in the, the song end up on a prepayment meter and right and they're the slaves to the kilowatt thieves and, oh. um, the other one dreadlock dread is um, a reggae style of, you used to wear um, a hat with dreadlocks didn't you yes I still do occasionally right then you are, play that in this song the old dreadlock you? shaped things yeah. coming out of it oh um because I did, I remember sitting there watching you play with this, with these dreadlocks, and I'm thinking, oh, that's good. And I'm afraid that they're actually yours until you took the hat off at the end, which kind of sport the illusion slightly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good look, I have to say. But anyway, yeah, so Dreadlock Dread. Um, yeah, it's a reggae style song. Again, um, made of basic loops, but I've made it sound all, um, built it out with different sound effects and different bits that I put on the mix. Um, it's about. Um, um, promiscuity among uh, young lads in uh, South African and uh, Afro-Caribbean urban communities. Crikey. Just getting the, the you know the sexual awareness message yeah. across. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Um, and, and I've tried to use a lot of the Jamaican speak that they use in uh, reggae songs. Right, in a humorous sort of way, I take it. It is the the wording of the lyrics is quite. Humorous, yeah, because yeah. although these are serious subjects, you do them in a humorous manner, don't you? It will make you laugh. Yes, yeah. <laughs> which is another thing I like about your show. They're co- comedic, aren't they? Which is all, which is really, really good. I think it's my natural cynicism which comes out in the the music, mm. and um, and that comes back as humour. So, mm. <laughs> it certainly does. So those those are the new songs on the EP, are they? Yeah. And how much are you selling this EP for? Might I ask? Well, it's it's out on Bandcamp for one pound fifty or whatever you want to pay. Right. So that's fifty p a song. You can't actually um, market them for zero, so I have to put something oh. on. Um, um, I realise I'm not, you know, a big artist, so um, I have to virtually give them away. Mm. <laughs> Um, but at the gigs, I've been trying out an idea. I think you suggested um, I give them away, and I thought yeah. I'd do one better and just say, let the fans name the price. Right. So I could have some royalties then from that, couldn't I? As it was an extension of my idea. Yeah, I don't remember signing the agreement. Oh, right. Oh, OK. Well, I'm, I'm sure we can draw one up for you. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. I'll just yeah. give you a CD. What else do you want? Oh, all right. That's <laughs> yeah, if you insist. But no, that's brilliant. I mean, the music's brilliant. Cause, I mean, because I've, I've still got your old CD. It's really, really good stuff. The, the idea is, is, as a gig, you offer 
um, make an offer as to what you want to pay and some people give me a tenner some mm. people give me 80p you know and some people just say I haven't got anything I'll oh, just have it right <laughs> so you can get the the CDs for free at your gigs <laughs> um, if you're if pretty you enough. really if you're pretty <laughs> enough <laughs> okay but I mean like you say you pay what you think it's worth That's so it, yeah. do we need to talk a little bit about the graphics on the CD Carlos um, while we're on the uh, subject I am um, yeah, I, I, I learned all that through. Uh, I was a sign maker for uh, for three years. Just briefly, without going too right. technically. <laughs> Basically, there's some really good artwork on there, and nice even, one. even the producer thought it was professional. Excellent. That's because it is professional. Yeah, I mean, only when working that CD player. All right. Um, okay, so that's brilliant. In comes John Sinclair into the studio. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, John. <laughs> you will be. Um, but yeah, okay then, um, and. You're doing this year's OBS Unplugged, I gather, as yes, well. Yes, I vowed never to do a competition again, but um, I got roped into doing this Why one. did you vouch never to do a competition again? Because um, I don't think... It, it, it just stinks too much of X Factor. I don't like um, competing for music. I think people should accept it how it is, and if they like it, they should tell more people about it. But if it's a gateway <coughs> to getting you onto festivals, which then opens you up to a bigger audiences and That's stuff... That's fine, it, yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> So you've got no problems with them, then, really, have you? No, no. Right. <laughs> so you're doing the OBS Unplugged, and when is that? That's um, Wednesday night, this Wednesday, the 7th. Mm -hmm. um, doors open at 8.15, and there's another six fantastic artists, local artists as well. Brilliant. And the musician is just a really cosy place. It is, isn't it? To watch a gig. It's yeah. just so, so at home in there. I went to an OBS Unplugged a couple of days ago, and it was nice because, like you say, a nice atmosphere. They've got the candles going, and there's a good selection, of, a wet, varied selection of musicians on, I find, as well, which will be the case in your night, especially, because obviously they'll have you, which is quite, uh, well, quite different. Very much plugged in. Oh, yeah, that's right. Electrically. <laughs> I mean, I thought, yes, it makes a change from the old man and guitar singing folk songs about his ex-bird. Yes. You know, and, and then this guy comes along with all this looping gear and these effects and yeah because you've got your looping machine haven't you which I always think is yeah. quite spectacular and uh, I, I hold a bass guitar now which um, provides the back beat yeah. the, for the song and you use a, is, uh, what was that electric electric double bass or something you sometimes use is that right um, yeah that was um, an upright bass um, I've now I'm down just holding a bass because it's more rock and roll right oh, I, I thought that had a good look about it because it's like one, a bass with nothing to it wasn't it I think it's a bit too weird for some. Oh, right. Oh, OK, I enjoyed that. OK, so you'll be performing this Wednesday. Do you know what time you'll be on? No. Okay. I know they don't tell you what time they're going to be on no. because the, all the audiences, um, if there's a headliner there, the audiences were all biased towards their slots, so yeah. they, they try and get everyone in the door to watch everything, which sure. is right. Yes. It should, you know, everyone should uh, hang around and mm -hmm. watch the show. And hopefully, then, if you do well in that... Um, then perhaps we could see you at some of the um, festivals, like uh, I think it's Riverside. Yeah, there's a Western, finale. Western. The finales are in yeah. February. Yeah. And, uh, last year I made the scenario, the uh, the finale. Oh. But I didn't hear anything of it, so I presumed I didn't get through. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, brilliant. So that'll be a good night. So that's this Wednesday. Any other gigs or anything in the future? Um, lined up? Next one is the Sound House. I'm a guest uh, player at the open mic. Uh, right. Rex Barrow's open, famous open mic mm. now. That'll Legendary. Be a, that'll be on a Tuesday. <laughs> that'll be a Tuesday. Yeah, that is in February the sixth. February the sixth. Sixth. All right. Okay. That should be Tuesday. Nice as well. Yeah, it's always Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. So. I just wondered about the sixth bit. But oh, okay then. It'll be on a Tuesday in February. First, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Well, we'll look forward to that. Um, so thank you very much for coming on, Carlos. Pleasure. And good luck in the OBS on Wednesday. And now, um, just to finish off with, we'll play another one of your songs, which is on your EP, which can be obtained free of charge at your gigs, or for a... If you're pretty if, enough. If, if you're pretty enough, but if you're not pretty enough, you'll probably need to pay. Or get Carlos a pint, would that do? Is um, not when I'm driving. No. Oh, OK, then. <laughs> so here's a Dreadlock Dread by Carlos Stein. Now they teach you to the school How to fit a rubber run and keep it on your 
it all Living with your lover You know the right to rule But you're sleeping with another Now you're playing like a fool Blonde, brunette, dreadlock, dread Uh-huh But you never had a redhead No Blonde, brunette, dreadlock, dread Uh-huh But you never had a redhead One
And that was The Bottle by George Simpson. Hi there. Hello, George. <laughs> he forgot his name there. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for having me in. Who are you, George Simpson? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And Ben Hartman's here as well, let's say that. Yes. How are you doing? You all right? Hello, yeah. very well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. No You're welcome. Now, if we can just talk about uh, about that song then, George, The Bottle. Yes. Is, that, is that your new single? Is yeah, it? it's the first official single off my new album, um, which is called Get, um, Get On This Ride, which is out on February the 16th. Right, the album is. Yeah, right. the album is. It's available now for pre- on pre-release, so that's really the first single that I've released with a, a video, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping just uh, to have try Have you had some it. national radio play already of some of your stuff? Yeah. yeah. Radio 2 or something, isn't it? Last year, there somewhere? last year, Radio 2 with um, yeah. my first single off my last album. That's right. Never Leave You Out In The Rain, and um, I've been sending a few tracks um, from the new, new album just to test the water and they seem to have liked the track so which is good and Mark Forrest has played a few songs nationally so yeah that's a uh, kind of BBC national yeah through local radio onto national yeah that's it goes it, out yeah. nationally doesn't it yeah. after night at night yeah, yeah they yeah. call it the, like the best of yeah so how did that come about just by you keep plugging away at sending them sending yeah just send, the send, send them in simple as that really I, it wasn't uh, to be honest it must have only been about two years ago I heard of BBC introducing where a family member said oh you can send tracks in and since then yeah. that's where mm. I thought actually there is uh, you know it's, it's a good little avenue really but obviously it depends on how yeah because uh, the National Radio 1 plugged that quite a lot because they have BBC introducing stages or yeah, exactly. uh, festivals now don't they anyway. yeah and they, the BBC Radio 1 they, they playlist one BBC introducing track I'm not sure if it's a month or a week or yeah that's right um, yeah, so yeah. You, you try finding them to download, though. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have stages like at Glastonbury as well, don't they? So yeah, yeah. This is a great route for people like myself and Ben to songwriters and. But of course, you know, the uh, starting point is always here. Of course. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. a good starting point locally. Yeah. Because I guess what we're trying to do is uh, a similar thing, but in a local fashion, really. Yeah, exactly. Because it's hard. There's so many, you know, so many artists. It's so. I'd say it's easy to do. As in, to get, you know, put your music together, put it into kind of a format where people can listen to it, and the hardest thing is then getting people to play it and reach the ears of listeners. So, so tell us a bit about the single then. Uh, why did you choose that as the single? Um, it's more the vibe of it, um, tempo-wise, length of song. The, uh, yeah, it's got a, it's kind of like a, a modern pop, but kind of like a seventies kind of soul vibe to it as well. It, it's more the, the nature. I didn't want anything to. Slur- you know, there's other songs that I probably prefer from a songwriting perspective, but maybe for a, a listener. Well, you listen to the album, you go, "That's an obvious single." Yeah. Um, the, again, track length. Yeah. Tempo. Mm. Um, you know, the, the hooky chorus, the kind of the movement of it. So that's. And what about the story behind it then? The bottom. Um, I wouldn't say it wasn't not about myself. It's really as a songwriter, I try and you can't always pick out your own circumstances or experiences sometimes I just try and think of someone else's or make one up but that is almost quite a common scenario the song it's about um, about the bottle it's about someone who um, is in kind of denial about um, you know a decision that wasn't in his hands from a you know a girl, he could interpret it as a girlfriend or boyfriend but in this particular scenario it's a girlfriend who's basically sacked him off he doesn't know why and he hits the bottle as uh, a, yeah. to, to escape his de- his anger and his the, we've all know, been there the, yeah exactly <laughs> so. some more than yeah. us yeah. <laughs> especially after Christmas there's going to be a lot of people <laughs> uh, yeah yeah not so. a good time to split up then is it no. uh, definitely not yeah. uh, but what about the recording process for you I, I mean how is, is that uh, do you do it yourself how does it work no uh the d- demo wise, I try and get as much of my ideas down as possible. But I've worked with a, a producer for the last couple of years in Derby called Ben Haynes, and he's got his own home. Um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. He's probably a full time producer in the last t- uh, three years, so he's quite um, new to it. Obviously, he's, he's a talented producer, but he, when I met him, he'd only been kind of this is his first year being a full time producer, so I caught him at the right time because his prices will probably go up quite a lot <laughs> in the next couple of years. So, so yeah, are you helping him as well as he's helping you then in a way? Yeah, so we've really just worked one on one, and we've used kind of more like session string quartets and um, mm. session people, but tried to keep it. I've, over the years, I've tried it with bands, and it hasn't quite worked out with like musical tastes and preferences, and it's uh, you know band personalities. So. I just thought I'm going to just concentrate on writing songs and try and get the songs to a, a finished standard where they sound good. 
And what about what, and what about gigs wise and performing and stuff? Is that on the is that being planned now? Yeah, I've got a big album launch in on February the twentieth at Melton Theatre. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's it holds three three hundred and forty uh, seats, and I think one hundred and forty have been sold already. So wow, yeah, so that's a good start. So I'm I just. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and focus more on quality and not quantity with gigs. That's quite an unusual venue as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a bit, it's kind of, well, I don't know if you'd agree with this, but Ben, but like as a performer doing your own material, you want a captivated audience, don't you? Want yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, you know, theatre from the hometown where I live, I can just to have all, you know, lots of familiar faces sure, yeah. all sitting and listening to what you've been working on it's for your years. It's local audience as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's... Uh, yeah. It's a tick- ticketed event as well, isn't it? So yeah. I haven't got, like, just people ra- randomly coming in and yeah. going out again. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. People, people are coming there, on yeah. purpose, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Ben will be playing as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, got, re- good. got a rehearsal tomorrow night. Yeah, well, we're going to talk to Ben in just a minute, actually. <laughs> I, c- I could imagine the uh, the atmosphere in there in the theatre must be quite special, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be one of them things that I'm going to look bit, back on if yeah. that's all I ever do. I know, obviously, I'm going to try and, you know, my sort of dream would be to kind of get a good support act slot for a sort of semi-major artist or in the future or I've got to try and obviously build my profile mm. more so you're going to have all the stage all, all the lights blacked out so the audience is in the in the darkness so yeah that's just, yeah just a spotlight yeah, wow that's amazing make me feel more comfortable <laughs> Uh, okay, so people want to download the single. Presumably, they can get it from the usual places, can't they? iTunes. Yes, they can. They yeah. can get it from iTunes if they type my name in George Simpson or the bottle. You'll they'll be able to find it. But also, um, Bandcamp's been used a lot more uh, these days. It's um, again, it's worked similar to iTunes, but um, it's more tailored, and any artist can just sort of uh, put the music on there. Um, and yeah, and if uh, anyone who downloads the track in January, the proceeds will go to um, Teenage Cancer Trust, uh, which is in That's support good. of a, a friend son who's got bone cancer, and is trying to raise. Uh, I think he's raised about four thousand so far. So I thought, really? you know, if you can contribute a little bit by people downloading the track, that's a bonus. So and the Melton gig date mm-hmm. again was um, that is February the twentieth, Melton Theatre. Okay, just after Valentine's Day. Exactly. Okay, oh, yeah, look forward to that. Hey. George, just before you go, um, I was going to say, you've got a song on um, on Hollyoaks, haven't you? Yes. Uh, you? How, how, how did that come about? Um, I put the... Uh, I registered all my songs on something called Centric Music, and it just goes into a massive database, and um, and I think you split they split the royalties 50-50 with uh, Centric, and and I put them on there ages ago. I think they can collect a kind of a performance royalty, so if you're going out gigging, yeah. playing your original stuff, you get, you know... 60p every time you play one of your own songs <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and I just looked at my PRS, a PRS statement I thought um, it said prime time channel 4 Holly. I was like what no one told me about this okay. <laughs> you apparently find out six months after when you get the Kind of the statement from Centric. So, so yeah. you started watching really? Hollyoaks now, have you? No, 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 <laughs> not that far, no. no. It took me enough years to get off Coronation Street, so I'm not yeah. going to. I managed it. to get off EastEnders about five years ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, you catch an episode and go, oh, it's still in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Or yeah. they come back in it, or whatever. Yeah, it sounds interesting. It's just a, they played about 14 seconds of um, one of the songs on my last album called Open Door, so I was like, oh, yeah. nice little surprise. <laughs> OK, we're going to move on to Ben now, because uh, Ben's been listening to you, so you've got to listen to him. Now. Yeah, <laughs> it's my turn now. God. Yeah. But are we going to play a song first? Though? Yes, we're going to do what that. What, so, what song are we going to play? Um, we're going to play Miles Away by Sugar Beat. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, yes, this is uh, something else we're going to talk about. OK, Miles Away with Sugar Beat, here it comes.
uh, miles away from Ben Hartman, who's uh, in the studio here at Hermitage FM. Um, and we're going to talk about that song because it's slightly different. You've got something to say about that, haven't you, really? Cause it's yeah, that's not me. That's, that's a not sh- you. It's a Sugar Beat song. That's it's Sugar a, Beat, yeah. yeah. A band that are re- reforming for a gig on the 31st of January at the Donkey. Okay, let's tell us a bit yeah. about What do you know about them? Oh, they're, they're a band that I used to be in. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know a lot about them then. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were around for I've about seen them, yeah. three or four years. Yeah, Sarah Bird. Yeah, Nursley, amazing yeah. vocals. Yeah, yeah Sarah she's, Bird. She's yes. singer, yeah, and um, we did quite well with it. We played played quite a few gigs. Um, we split up about three years ago, and um, Sarah just got in touch with me on Facebook and just said, "Do you fancy getting together and having a reunion?" So. We phone everybody up and getting the band back together oh, brilliant. so yeah it'd be good yeah we've got a decent back catalogue of stuff so it'll be uh, it'll be good fun to play it a lot of people kind of remember the songs and stuff yeah you know they've got quite a bit of airplay mm. so i don't think i was really aware of them back in the day but never mind no, no. i don't know where you were you them now i don't know where I was. you're under a rock uh, and, do you, <laughs> and do you know it's 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 really good to hear of a band actually reforming because yeah over this period there seem to be so many bands yeah. that are not re- that are sort of splitting up I think, you have to, I think you have to be around for a while for it to happen. That's yeah. Awesome. You have to be old. Yeah, that's Club 7, they're reforming. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's right. Are they? <laughs> yeah, apparently that, that so, yeah. Club. That was about 1997 or something, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, they're all crawling out the woodwork. I think they're skint, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually what happens, let's yeah. go back together, what a good idea, do some live gigs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And get the old fans or the old fans. Uh, but for you, you've been abroad a bit last year, weren't you? I have. Those pictures on Facebook of you in Cyprus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, sold, come about. I sold my soul. I um, I went over and worked in Cyprus, uh, playing covers in a hotel, in a four-star hotel. Did that for six months. Um, it was interesting. I had some really great weeks. I had some, like I said, interesting weeks with some of the guests that were there. But, yeah, it was good. Good, did good you see an curve. advert? Did somebody ask you to go? How did it, how did it uh, come me and the, Me and a singer that I work with called Amy, um, we put our details for the duo that we're part of. Um, put our details on, I think it was called Star Now, was the name of this website. And this company that sort of uh, do contracted uh, entertainments through Thompson's Holidays, they got in touch with us. We went down to Brighton, did an audition, got the job. And um, when we were driving home, actually, we'd like we just got from Brighton onto the M1, and we got a um, an email through on Amy's phone with the contract on it saying, "Can you sign it and send it back? You're leaving in May." So we're like, "Right, okay." <laughs> That's d- done deal then. So yeah, we just. Uh, I gather there's list. quite a lot of call though for English bands doing covers over. Yeah, uh, yeah, the there countries. is. Yeah, especially in um, Prataras, like near where our hotel was. Um, a lot of the entertainers that were sort of like working around there and working in the different hotels, they're all from the UK. Yeah. And does, does that pay enough to keep them out there for a bit? So I can have like. Yes, a um, one guy that I know, um, Andy. He was the he was called the Soul Man. Um, he went out there to work as a DJ. He ended up getting the gig being the soul man, and uh, he's been out there for seven years now. Wow. Yeah, just decided to stay. Uh, I, I guess, does that mean that kind of this year we're looking to go somewhere else with the same company as uh, opportunities to expand? No, 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 I'm focusing this this year. I'm, I mean, a couple of years ago, I think when I was speaking, last time I spoke to you on the radio, and last yeah. time I spoke to you, Kevin, as well, um, I was working with Calder McLaughlin, mm, Polly Yates, right. doing my solo stuff, working with Pamela Moo. And working with George as well. So now I've come back, I've just kind of like, I just want to focus on a few key things, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm working on my own original stuff, I'm working with George on his stuff. But with George it's kind of different because the songs are already there, so it's not like we're, we're hitting the studio writing. I'm oh right, yeah, you're I'm remixing George's old stuff. No, 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 He's, um, basically the songs are already there, so the, like the, the, the new album that's coming out and oh, the, the Sugar album Beat stuff. Pre- previous stuff. No, this is George's stuff. Right. The album's previous to that, I've already got them. And I'm basically just oh, learning them and going out as like a like a live guitar player for them. Yeah, because you basically. did a gig at the Donkey, didn't you? That when you kind of like uh, George was singing, oh, you yeah. su- you were playing in the band. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah we yeah. kind of like that worked quite help, well, didn't it? Help each other out, don't we? So are you just working with, working with George then at the moment, and not working um, with George? Pamela and we're doing the um, Sugar Beat reunion as well. Right. But that's it as far as the original stuff is okay. concerned. Yeah, just so I can focus a little bit more, and you know. Rather than kind of like juggling say, all these I mean, different things. I mean, there was a time. I you think it was most gigs that I went to. I yeah, think. it was you. <laughs> it, some was, other band. Again, yeah, <laughs> there was a time last year when I did um, this OBS competition yeah. that we're doing again this That's week. Right, yeah. And there was a time last year when I was doing that. And I think one of the nights that where I played, 
I was in four of the bands that were playing. Yeah, and <laughs> I, mean, was I was probably there, I actually, yeah. got myself a beer and just <laughs> sat up on the stage. Yeah, yeah, you worked with Pamela Moo for quite a lot. You did festivals yeah. with her, didn't you? I remember yeah, that yeah. Mm. one of the places I met you. What's, yeah. pa- what's Pamela doing now? You're doing bits with the Paradigms as well. Yeah, she's working with the Paradigms, um, and she's kind of like behind the... Um, behind closed doors she's writing and working on new material yeah yeah you know, I think that's what a lot of people tend to do these days sort of they put their stuff out there they see see what works see what doesn't work mm. and then they just go away if you've got nothing to mm. talk about then you might as well just not talk okay <laughs> and what it. about festivals I mean George well, I never asked George about it but uh, are you targeting playing any would you like to play any particularly this year well I think that's part of the point of this OBS competition is yeah. to do things like um, I think it's Simon Says Festival yeah, that's right yeah yeah. I'd like to try and get on uh, Riverside Festival because I, I did that with Sugarbeat a f- good few years ago now. I think it was two, three years ago, three, three, four years ago. That was really, really good. We had a really good response from yeah, that. Yeah, I do the choir for that. You know, the, yeah, the, I know you yeah, do, yeah. Still, I don't know whether I didn't do it last year because I think I was working, but like, it is a good festival, though, isn't it? Brilliant festival, yeah. Considering it's just run by the local council mm, and it's all, yeah. all local acts. But yeah, Simon Says, Strawberry Fields. Uh, not Simon Says, what's it called now? It is called Simon it's Says, the one that... Um, yeah, it's called... Demont, what, yeah, it's, what did it used it to be It used called? to be Summer, 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 summer Sunday, 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 that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Western Park, hopefully, as well, because that's another good yeah, new that's, one, Yeah, it? I've played that before, yeah. yeah. What about you, George? you thought about festivals yet? Or you, you no, know? I tried to get on a few, but... Um, sorry, yeah. No, be, being a mountain lad and being quite... I'm quite... I'm, I'm not really that well known, I'd say, um, on the original scene, because I've literally focused on songwriting over the years and not... Yeah. Um, and not really gigged original stuff unless, you know, OBS and a few kind of put on nights. So, um, I'm, it's me I'm trying yeah. to bang on the doors. I don't really get yeah, it's a bit response it's a bit, from people. But it's a bit foreign to you at the moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I sort of ask the questions and try and get on a few of the festivals, but I don't really hear much back, to be honest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, never mind. So, I might have to just uh, well, okay, let's get Ben to knock on the door <coughs> for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sort you out, mate. I might yeah. have to skirt around and just wait for Glastonbury instead. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So what about material that you're doing at the moment, Ben? Tell us about what, what, what are you doing, kind of material-wise? Um, material-wise, like I said, I'm, I'm working with George on some stuff. I'm also, um, obviously, while I was away in Cyprus, I had a, quite a long opportunity to sit down and write some good songs myself. Um, so I've got another album that I'm going to hit the studio with in the next couple of months. Hopefully should have that out by the summertime um, and then get some gigs off of the back of that, hopefully. Mm. That's the plan. Yeah. But meanwhile, I mean, we were talking about festivals and stuff. You're both playing at the OBS, aren't you? In OBS Unplug. We are. In, or was it on Thursday? Yeah. Yes. So I'm in his band as well. Yeah, that's my <laughs> But I'm playing on the same yeah. night, so I'm going to sabotage his set. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to detune his guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Because like we were just talking about with Carlos, there's a good, uh, that's one thing I like about the OBS Unplugged, there's a good variety of music um, that's performed there, isn't mm. it? It's not just acoustic yeah. people. In fact, to be honest, I don't think anybody is actually unplugged there, are there? Even the acoustic guitars are plugged in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, they wouldn't no, be loud enough. It that, yeah. <laughs> but it is on the acoustic side of things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. No electrics, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, how many acts are they having on? It's a musician, isn't it, Thursday? S- is it seven each night? Seven yeah. each night. yeah. Right. seven or eight because I'm in I, I'm just thinking can I go I was just checking my diary because <laughs> uh, uh, I do a thing called the rock choir now oh yeah, yeah the I rock choir the rock, there's, a, there's only about ten guys mostly <laughs> it's mostly ladies but we sing current songs you see really but we have rehearsals on Thursday and then we do uh, my first gig believe it or not was Wembley Stadium really yeah 2,000 of us though <laughs> oh, <laughs> so right. you can really hear me <laughs> <laughs> but maybe after that man, I might be able to get away and come down what sort of songs do you sing in that? In your uh, well, your we choir? did. Uh, well, um, well, we've done kind of. It's 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 reasonable. We did Mr. Blue Sky, for instance. Oh yeah. But with a choir, you can have different parts. It just yeah. sounds oh, really well. good. Bit of ELO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, and we've done. We did a George Ezra song recently. Oh well. yeah. Uh, so we've done fairly modern. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, I was thinking like Bon Jovi and no, no, Def we haven't. No, and we, no like we haven't really done that. No. <laughs> yeah. ELO's are probably the most rockiest one we've done. Actually. Yeah, you can't beat a bit of ELO. A bit of Oli Murs, we've done that too. Uh, uh. Anyway, back to you. Yeah. Uh, but I'll try and check you out on there. We you know what time you're on. You no, know? we didn't. We never do. No. We just no. turn up and they say that. Yeah. yeah, we just turn up and when we're, we're on, we're on. Yeah. Yeah. So what about the crowds? So you get decent crowds for that as well. So yeah. I, guess, I guess if you've got seven acts and you'll try and bring ten people yeah. or something. It, I think yeah. part part of the um, the idea of the night is to like try and bring down as as many people as you can. Um, obviously. 
myself being the age I am, I mean, George is a little bit younger, but if there's, lo- there's a lot of like the youngsters down there, and obviously they get all their friends from college and school and stuff like that. An old dog like me that's been around the block no a few times. Too. Yeah, I've got no, got no <laughs> friends, so we just. If you're an old dog. I, I'm seriously worried about. <laughs> <how I am. laughs> it's just a case of like playing to do new people, and it's you know it yeah, is a good yeah. night. So mm. well, it's never empty there, is it? I, mean, no. I went to an OBS unplugged a couple of nights ago, and again, it was you know it was quite it was quite full. Yeah. And there's a good atmosphere. I, I love the little candle lit tables and stuff yeah. they do as well. Oh, it is. It's, it's good to kind of like see all the people in the music community and have mm. a chat with them as well. We know you. I know. Just I just saw Carlos leaving stuff. Yeah. Then, um, yeah. I've known him for a good few years. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's it a social event as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is nice. And they do good beer down there as well. They do. Yeah. yeah. Lovely okay, ales. We've got a song of yours to play now. Eh? We have. Yes. So Note to go. self. Oh, yeah. right. So here is Note to self. It was, oh, do, well, so it's quite obvious, I suppose, what it's. Uh, is it? Would you like to tell us what it's about? <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> it's it, is, it is what it is. Yeah, right. yeah. It's a note to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so when you make a stupid mistake or do something dumb or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. make a mental note to yourself. Like it's basically asking obvious questions. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Ken. <Deb>. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So here is "Note to Self" by Ben Hartman. Ben Hartman's uh, note to self there, uh, Hermitage FM, local music show myself, 
uh, John Sinclair and Kevin Gorn. Uh, we got Ben here and George as well. Uh, gig wise, Ben uh, obviously told us about the album and stuff and an OBS, but um, anything else you'd like to tell us about? Um, just the uh, the Sugar Beat gig that we've got on the thirty first of January this month. Like I said, it's a reunion gig, so it'd be good to see some people down there, some old Sugar Beat fans. So yeah, we've got that and um, George. Yeah, um, again, yeah, uh, my um, album launch at Melton Theatre on the Friday the 20th of February. Um, so if anyone's interested, obviously, go on the Melton Theatre website and you'll be able to buy a ticket. OK. Um, I, just a very quick question. It's a bit random, this one. But I, I was just looking back on the, the tracks that I bought in 20, uh, like 2014. I'm thinking there's quite a good varied around, um, amount of music around it. There's some really good artists, male and female. Uh, do you think that we generally get getting a, a quite a good chart quite a good radio it, listen to listen to these days um it's hard to say it depends uh, where your roots are from i think if you're a uh, you love your 70s guitar based rock music i think you're probably struggling you're a bit disappointed <laughs> seeing just like you know yeah, yeah, singer songwriter yeah. acoustic guitarist uh, singer songwriters appearing everywhere but it depends i mean for me personally i, I like what's you know, going yeah, on I mean, Kasabian ruled the, ruled the roost a bit. I mean, obviously, a brilliant gig in Leicester as well, didn't they? And they're sort kind of conquering the world, which is good from a Leicester point of view, I suppose. Yeah, it's good to, when they get to the point where they can leave leave the UK and they're all going to conquer the whole world now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. But obviously, a lot of artists potentially coming through still as well locally. That's obviously what we looked forward to. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. Trying to promote that, isn't it? There's really? a lot, isn't there, in Leicester, Leicestershire? Yeah. Mm. From, so. you know. There are, and especially with programmes like Dean Jackson's we were talking about earlier. He, yeah. He's really put, helping to put them on, us on the spot, in the spotlight. Yeah, no, definitely. There's, yeah. I okay. mean, just from um, going to more more gigs, and uh, from where I'm at Melton, there's a good venue called the Noel Zoms that put on uh, original artists on Thursday nights. And yeah. I've seen in Melton uh, Martha Bean and uh, Mia in the Moon and few acts from Leicester and it's really it's made people kind of really open their eyes especially where I'm from to think God oh, these are all like local yeah mm. that's right yes. local acts it's kind of discovering yeah. people all the time yeah yeah I think that's how I discovered you in fact I, I turned up at a gig you were playing I think that's what happens though isn't it yeah you, know, you just go and think wow I didn't know that these people were around yeah yeah exactly so it's get out to gigs basically is a message yeah. I think, isn't now it? yeah, yeah. Yes. well not right now after the show yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come to OBS at the Musician on Thursday. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah. a good starting point. Okay. Yeah, there's plenty of acts there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks very much for coming in. Anyway, good to see you again. Hope you have a good 2015, and maybe we'll talk later in the year about how it's been as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Cheers, John. Cheers, Kev.